Hello. What are we doing today? Hey, what are we doing today? We're doing some more work on the diorama. You're going to help me. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to KT TV on the second episode of the diorama that I'm making for the KT Tools Working Museum Phase 2. What a mouthful. And I hope you've gone and had a look at our GoFundMe page. Do you remember that GoFundMe page? <laughs> Oof. Are you going to put all your pocket money this year? All your Alfie Shine money? Yeah. So today we're going to be using some um, really um, opposite ends of the spectrum, I guess, tools. Um, both real favourites of mine. But what we're going to be doing um, is taking some rough boxwood, <laughs> if there is such a thing. Um, I've got loads of offcuts. I think this actually, this offcut probably came from making this plane. Um, and we're going to take these and we're going to whittle them down to standard log sizes like this, which are square and have fine edges, fair edges. And then I, I, I actually cut them down using a Japanese saw. Uh, the saw that I use um, is, is quite a cheap one, actually. It's, um, it's a Shogun. And it's fabulous because it's got, um, it's a, I think it's Ryoba, or is it a Cantana? I'm not sure. I don't use Japanese swords very much, but it's exceedingly um, fine. And um, it will saw down these larger logs. So if you imagine uh, in the real building, we're taking large planks of oak and we're um, taking them down to, to large beams. And then the milling process will bring them down to long uh, beams like that, which is this one's seven and a half by seven and a half, which is 20th scale for 150 by 150, which is six by six in old money, or if you happen to come from the colonies. So what I've done here is I've set up a, once you get to that stage, we're effectively got quite long um, scale wise, beams and this is this is well over what we need so for the frames we've got um, long beam sections at the top and the bottom of each frame and we've also got exactly the same dimensional posts going up um, to make the, the frames um, themselves and that will be joined together with um, uh, uh, mortise and tenon joints in order to get an exactly so I brought this one down I've marked on on here um, you probably can't see it but it's like uh, all the sizes I've gone along here and put a, set, a micrometer along here and I've got 7.9, 8.5, 7.8, 8 and so on. So this piece is pretty well out of, out of whack um, and what but it's now very long and relatively difficult to hold. So if you look down here what I've done is I've created a jig where I double side tape the piece let's move all this out of the way and I've double sided taped the the piece that I'm working on onto the um, Corian sheet now Corian has a it's used for bathrooms and kitchens and it's absolutely wonderful um, it's quite expensive it's made by DuPont and um, it's virtually indestructible it's got loads of scratches in it as you can see um, but you know with a kit of repair kit I could just wipe across that and and they'd be gone. Um, so it's well worth getting for kitchens if you're in the market for a new kitchen rather than these crappy um, uh, kitchen tops that you get. Let's put that one out of the way for a second because I'll come on to that. So what, we're, what, what I start out by doing is smoothing off. Now this, this boxwood jointer is, um, is one I made uh, quite a few years back now. Um, and when I say it's a jointer, it's, as you can see, it's really useful for joining, uh, for jointing lots, long pieces of small things. So that's why it's scaled down. A normal jointer would be three foot and so, and quite thick, or quite wide and quite high. But this is exactly scaled down to the work that I, I do. So we're really just taking off the high spots. So I'll just whiz down this. And you can hear it's not cutting hardly because it's taking off the high spots. 
And then all of a sudden, no, nah, we need to clamp this down. It's, uh, it's not going to play ball today. I'll put some stuff on the bottom of it to um, stop it from slipping on here, thinking, oh, won't we be bothered with a cramp? But, well, it's wrong. So, this will just take the high spots off. So, you hear it working more and more and more. And the ends are the high spots. And we can hear it now getting more and more. And so on. When it's almost done with that, and we've got some beautiful little shavings there. Um, and it's very, very uh, fine. It can cut very finely. It's, a, it's an Ollie Sparks iron in this one, which I commissioned for this plane. Um, so it's absolutely lethal. Once we've done the jointing, it's fairly close to um, the size. Uh, then I use what I call my two doors plane. Now, I was in critical care department back in 2016, I think. And I was about 45 degrees in this bed with a nurse. Oh, no, I was 45 degrees in the bed and the nurse was there, yeah, not to create any confusion. And um, and so there's two doors. There's one that says morgue and there's one that says maybe. And these are, these are um, doors in my mind. Um, so I sat there and I, the only thing I had was a mobile phone. So I was skimming board through uh, John Economaki's beautiful site at the time. A Bridge City tool works in Portland, Oregon. And I just saw this block plane and it's super futuristic. And I just thought, you know, this is the yin to my yang. You know, this is the the opposite, complete diametric opposite of, of a simple 18th century tool. This is somebody's brain fart that they've had when they spend, I think John spends two weeks away um, on his own and he comes up with ideas and it's just beautiful. So I thought I I can't afford that. I just can't afford it. I looked at the price. I can't afford it and uh, Then I thought hang on a minute Those two doors if I get through that door and I've got this waiting for me the other side Then that'll be a reason to want to go through it and if I don't make it well I won't be bothered anyway, will I? So I ordered it and it cost a fortune <laughs> and this is a one-off actually because I got in touch with um, Consuela who is John's um, secretary um, and I said can I have it with an 01 tall steel iron in it because they make it with A2 and I don't like A2 at all I hate A2 and they said we don't make it with it we only make it with A2 and then I got an email from John to say I've got one O one iron which we use for testing O one in it uh, in my drawer. Would you like it? And, and they put it in it. So that's the only one in the world that's got that on it. Now it has these two skids here. What I call skids, uh, you can call them skates, whatever you want. These are optional extras. And when I say optional extras, I'm I'm talking about how much extra it costs you to buy a um, you know a cup holder in a Rolls Royce. Um, not cheap either. I think these skids probably cost more than most planes on the market. But anyway, they screw onto the side of this um, this marvel of engineering, and um, you set the height of the. I'd use uh, Chris Vesper's beautiful as always, either in my pocket or on the bench. So if I want to set this to a depth of seven point five, let's call it eight for now so we've got a little bit of leeway and I set Chris's set square to that I can set that skid to that distance okay and I set it front front back front back like that so it's absolutely um, square and then it rides on the Corian so as I put it down it will ride on the Corian itself when it gets to the Corian. Before that, it just rides on the boxwood. And you probably think it's not even cutting, but this is a surgical instrument and that's what you get. 
it doesn't even sound as if it's cutting it's so accurate it is such a beautiful tool but it is very very surgical don't go buying one of these if you just want a block plane for the for the workshop because uh, it is very very finely set and very surgical and it's used for jobs like this now when I get all of this edge because this is fixed on here when I get all of this edge and it's no longer cutting I know that the distance from the corian to the top of the boxwood this distance here is 7.5 millimeters or in this case eight because I've said it half a millimeter proud and it just carries on cutting very fine whisper type shavings um, because this is the final stage and I won't go over and over and over again but when that's done I just stick a knife under I, can't, I literally cannot pull this off I could probably lift the entire bench up by just holding on to that such is the power of this 3m double-sided tape and it's really really good for um, holding something small down while you're working on it um, so that side is now we know that side is now um, flat and I could I really ought to now take this off peel all that off flip it over and do the other side because that would square it up because we weren't sure whether this side was square when we made the other side and that completes the beam so this week that's what I'm doing I'm making loads and loads of these beams all to size and slowly but surely I shall be making mortars and tenon joints in each of the corners and then we had a great discussion last night on um, on bench talk um, because I need to draw bo uh, bore these and we worked out that the uh, pegs for the draw boring uh, to 120 scale are actually one millimeter so I'm gonna have to get a piece of off cut of boxwood and make toothpicks and then push them through a draw plate which I've got on order uh, to one millimeter and that will give me the scale size for putting draw pins in to pull the joint together but that will be for next episode three I hope so you'll see me back again then me and him because we're always here aren't we um hello are we gonna sit up and say goodbye thank you very much thank you sit say goodbye goodbye everybody and see you next time <laughs>